yeah so like uh yeah i start my journey like uh, um from the scratch like you know being a volunteer being an ambassador and you know yeah for a couple of projects like that yeah but i got my first project that was uh, 2021 uh with uh will be global exchange for anybody that actually will be global exchange yeah, yeah. So yeah, after that, I actually worked for Celo uh, African DAO and Celo like Celo as a uh, grant office officer, and now I'm now with uh, Alufi. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's a bit intro uh, about me. Yeah, so at Alufi, yeah, yeah, we uh, make uh, saving uh, easier, like uh, to save on stable token and you know uh, edge against uh, inflations and you know yeah. And currently, we have a very good API. Uh, you know yeah. So basically, yeah, well, that's not the point. Yeah, but uh, this is the uh, DeFi course diploma. Like, uh, I welcome you guys, and I'm very happy you guys are part of this program. And yeah, of course, you're gonna be like uh, get more uh, of learning and. In Um, is it just me or can you guys hear them? Um, okay, great. I think he has concluded with the intro. Awesome. Um, great to hear that. Uh, thanks for um, doing that intro, Adam. So I'm just going to proceed to like um, um, restrict everyone from unmuting themselves and then we can like um, kick this off. And then when you have your questions, please, if you have any questions, too well to send it to the chat box. We're going to have it un answered um, at the end of this session. Um, so just a little bit of intro about me. We are past the time, so I want to keep this started immediately. Um, I'm Precious Elisha, I'm the community specialist for Halofi. And um, it's, it's I don't want to say much, but it's amazing working for Halofi and it's been a nice one. Um, most people in the Web3 space knows me as Focus Pilot. I'm a community builder, community manager, and uh, my story has, uh, my story in cryptocurrency began in 2019. And even before then in 2017, I had a media brand of my own. So that was where I started community building from. And so like, um, it's been amazing. I've worked for different brands. I've been able to gain some knowledges and um, I'm here to like learn more and share more with you guys. Uh, we're going to have some keynote speakers who are going to be joining us. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Um, so just to give you the order of the the order of the schedule, I know we've gone overboard with time, um, but then we are done with the um, arrival and intro, and we are going to be unveiling the topics to you. And so because of the time constraint, what we're going to do is to have the slide discussion within the next 15 minutes. And after that, we're going to have Marek, um, Rain, rather, the co-founder of Celo, we're going to have him join us. Um, uh, I'm going to do the intro of the topics he's going to speak about. And after that, we're going to have like a short question and answer uh period so if you have any question and answer during the course of the uh, lesson please make sure to have it down on the chat box and then we're going to like answer it so basically that's what we're going to be learning for this week um we're going to be talking about what blockchain is and intro into blockchain we're going to talk about how blockchain like pioneer the uh, how bitcoin Pioneered blockchain, the history of Bitcoin. We're going to talk a little about Ethereum, and um, yeah, we're going to share about um, what um, um, Vitalik's vision was when he started building Ethereum and how it's now transforming. We're going to talk about Celo and its transition to L2, and we're going to talk about smart contract. So um, we're going to kick off uh, with what is a blockchain. So um, Picture a public system whereby transactions are recorded and um, they are non-changeable. Like everybody can see what is being done. Um, everyone like knows what happened. All transactions are recorded on the uh, on that public ledger system, and that's what a blockchain represents. So, according to what we have here, it is a digital ledger that records transaction um, securely across multiple 
computers, like each transaction forms a block. As you can see, this um, kind of um, like illustration, each transaction forms a block which is linked in a way that it cannot be tampered with. And that's when we talk about the immutability nature of um, the blockchain. So like each transaction that occurs on the blockchain cannot be changed. So you might have a, 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 a situation where um, maybe a record has been changed or has been tampered with, maybe um, like you don't know who did it, but it has been changed. And so you don't have the um, real results or the real thing that happened, search does not happen on the blockchain. So I'm just going to proceed um, by like giving the short intro. So blockchain te technology uh, makes everything transparent. We're going to like, uh, we're just going to be talking about the basics today and we're going to explore more um, in the um, future workshops, which is going to be happening every week. So this is the basic, we're going to advance, don't worry. And so blockchain, enables like secure and transparent recording of transactions so with the blockchain we don't need the banks um if any of you has transacted with um sorry i got the feedback um just to check if you can see my screen oops sorry sorry guys i you haven't been seeing my screen all through so i'm just going to share it right now sorry about that um, thanks for the aids of Adam. Adam sent me a quick um, message. He sent me a quick message telling me that my screen hasn't been shared all this while. So thank you, Adam. Um, I think everyone can see my screen right now. So uh, we're going to go back to discussion. So like, yep. Let me just, for the sake of not sharing this earlier, let me just go back to the first slide. So. I was talking about blockchain being a public ledger, like uh, each transaction forms a kind of block that are linked together, making it like um, not changeable. So let's proceed. I think everyone gets the idea behind that. And please, if you have any question, we're going to go through it. But because of we have like less time to have this covered today, especially before we have rain coming to speak. We have literally about eight minutes before it comes in. So we're just going to like um, proceed. So um, like I said, blockchain eliminates the need for intermediaries. So um, with your traditional banking system, if you want to send some money, like it has to like go through the intermediaries between the uh, banks and the centralized authority. Like, so basically you cannot perform um, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. It's just like, um, for instance, you meet someone on the way and you just feel like giving them maybe a dollar, for instance, and you have the dollar slip on your hand. Um, what the blockchain allows is for you to deal with the person like immediately directly but with the centralized um, exchange authorities we have like the banks and the government you would need to pass through the government and this brings a lot of things like um fees and the the process is not transparent and there is little trust in the in the um in the process of doing that so the blockchain features nodes of network um, it is not a single dat database and we don't need to trust a single computer or entity. So um, like here we explained what a network of nodes refers to. So we can see the illustration here. Um, just imagine like computers or devices that are like um, connected together to validate transactions on the blockchain. So um, all of them must agree before like um, like we can actually know that okay this transaction was successful it was successful and each node stores a copy of the, the the transaction and they are verified so like anything that goes on on the blockchain is actually like verified and um you 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 totally can trust any transaction performed on the blockchain i don't know for some people who are familiar with um block scanner, maybe the data scan, maybe the BSC scan, you can easily go um, copy transaction hash. Uh, what I mean by transaction hash is like the transaction ID of a particular transaction and check all the details, the time and like every other details, which 
is not possible when using um like the centralized authority so um here we just like letting you know that unlike the traditional centralized database where we store information in a particular place governed or maintained by the centralized authority the blockchain is actually distributed not one person like um like secures um this information and so it is done like um in a, in, in a collective way so everybody has like access to like um whatever is being done online you can go and view and it is not changeable so we are going to proceed to like the next slide is simply telling us that we don't need to trust a sim a, a, like we don't need to like trust a single computer entity because the transactions are like recorded by different um like computers and it is what we call the consensus mechanism so it is not relying on just one um system or one um, profile to get things done it is maintained by different nodes so like everybody needs to agree on what is actually right you understand so like it is giving no space for manipulation and it is giving all the like space for trust so um to the next slide um, I'm just going to show you a quick video. Um, please confirm on the chat box if you can hear the sound. Um, I when you see want to here. buy something normally, Great. using your normal bank card, this is what happens. I give my card details to the shop. The shop asks the bank if I'm good for the money. The bank checks its records to see if I've got enough in my account. If I do, it lets the shop know. It updates its records to show the movement of money from my account to the shops. Oh, and it takes a little cut for its trouble. Now, if you wanted to remove the bank from that system, who else would you trust to keep those records and then not alter them or, or cheat in any way? Well, I wouldn't trust you. I wouldn't trust you. In fact, I wouldn't trust any single person. But I might trust everyone. The idea is you don't have a central record of transactions. Instead, you distribute many, many copies of this ledger around the world. Each owner of each copy records every transaction. So, to buy something using cryptocurrency, I give the shop my details. The shop asks all the bookkeepers if I'm good for the money. The bookkeepers all check their records to see if I have enough. If I do, they tell the shop and then all update their records to show the movement of money. So there's no way that a forged transaction can make it in. If I try to alter a ledger, it won't match all of the other copies. And it gets rejected. Oh, and one of them, at random, will be given a reward of some newly created cryptocurrency. This is how cryptocurrencies work. And remember, all of these bookkeepers, all of these ledgers, they're not actually people. They're computers. Lots of computers. Great, great, great. So um, I think with these, like, it's giving us like um, a very simple explanation of what it means when you perform a transaction on the blockchain. So. Um, I can see a lot of reaction on the chat box, which tells me that um, a lot of people understand like what the video explains. So yeah, great. Um, let's just proceed. Um, give me a couple of seconds. Um, sorry about that. So to the next slide, um, the pioneer of blockchain. Guys, we're going to be having Marek's um, brain soon. And so, we are going to have to like um, skip some um, some lessons for now, just for now. So after he gives us presentation, and then we like 
are done with the questions and answer for that particular presentation then we're just going to like um um like continue with the discussion trust me they are not hard discussions they would basically take about like maybe um five to ten minutes um yeah so great great so i'm expecting rain to like join the call anytime from now so the pioneer of blockchain bitcoin was created in 2009 by an unknown person or group using the pseudonym satoshi nakamoto i think almost everybody here has heard about satoshi it's no um like problem if you haven't heard about who satoshi is but like um satoshi was the one who created bitcoin and um bitcoin is actually the first and the most known um like application of blockchain technology so everybody who knows crypto um who knows who hears about blockchain who hears about cryptocurrency first gets to hear about blockchain so um it introduced the concept of decentralized digital currency that operates on a blockchain so basically what this is saying is that it was through bitcoin that we discovered that we could actually transact on the chain on the blockchain without having to like maybe go to the bank or engage any of these centralized authorities or any of that so like this is just a summary of what um bitcoin has enabled and so bitcoin emerged in 2009 amidst the global banking crisis as an alternative a decentralized alternative to a traditional or to a centralized um financial system so um just a moment oh great um we have rain in um just minutes. okay we are, we are about to have rain hello rain um great to have you on this call um we are we are happy to have you on this call and it's going to be a great um one today uh before i just proceed i'd like to just have our founder rachel to say hi um like to welcome you officially and then we're going to kick this off and before rachel on you to save guys rain is the like uh co-founder of Celo. i think all of you know Celo, or most of you know um Celo. Celo is a blockchain um that cares a lot about like mobile accessibility so um rachel can now unmute to save and speak then we'll, we'll take it off rachel please Apologies, guys. I was just, uh, trying to find the uh, mute button. Hi, Renee. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a real, real pleasure to have you on this week, especially as it's been like a massive week for Cello. Um, and just to introduce everyone, we've got you know well over forty people on this call, all learning the kind of foundations of blockchain, crypto, and this week we are going right back to you know the history of Bitcoin, was kind of where it all started. Um, but it's really fantastic to have you, you know, on here as a um, as a blockchain founder and someone who's kind of built both um, Cello as an as an L1 um, and also now as as you kind of migrate to an L2 as well. So massive thank you to to Renee and for everyone on the call. Cello is the blockchain that we've been uh, on for well over three years, and it is the blockchain that we have uh, launched a HaloFi save on. So it's certainly very dear to. Uh, all of our hearts here at HaloFi. Um, and with that, Renee, I'll pass you over to do a quick intro and just say hello to all of the blockchain uh, blockchain learners on the call today. I think we might need Precious. Can you unmute, Renee? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, yeah, Renee is a cool. Awesome. Awesome, yeah, I know. Uh, it's really great to be here. Um, I uh, definitely, um, it's it's funny and kind of thinking about this uh, was uh, doing the math on uh, when we first started getting into the space back in, in 2017, uh, starting to kind of build things that now have become cello. And it's kind of wild because in some ways, you know, seven years feels like a long time, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> decades of work in a regular company. Uh, in other ways, it still feels like very much, uh, you know, that kind of day one feeling uh, of uh, feeling at the beginning of something very big and special. 
Um, so I know there are some slides. Uh, I don't know, uh, Halo Five crew should I, should are you guys doing the slides uh, at the same time or that uh, or are we doing? Uh, are we, are we, I, am I just going sort of high levels through the the talking points? Um, yeah. You that you had. What sort of the um, what's the preference? Yeah, so I think we're going to prefer you to like handle the topics. Um, just the topics I sent you earlier is going to be talking about Celo and its recent transition into like a layer two system and uh, layer two blockchain rather. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, Ethereum as a blockchain. And finally, yeah. we're going to talk about smart contracts. So yeah, great to have you here, Rene. Perfect. So I'll, I mean, I, I saw the slides you got. I mean, they're great. So I'll, I'll cover everything that's on there and sort of maybe a little sprinkle in a little color from our own journey, um, which will maybe help explain some of the the concepts in in practice. So um, yeah, I think you guys already covered Bitcoin. Um, I think I got my first Bitcoin back in 2013, um, and you know, having worked in sort of the financial industry. I was like more skeptical than I should have been. He was like, okay, I wonder why we need like this digital, you know, like money, like whatever money, money works just fine, right? Um, and at the time, obviously, you know, Bitcoin uh, felt very much just like an experiment still, right? And, um, and the UI UX of wallets was horrible, right? Where for normal people, if you didn't have a special interest, uh, you very quickly abandoned it. Um, but Ethereum, when when Ethereum popped up, um, uh, I remember first hearing about it. It was probably twenty late 20, 2015, 2016, One of our, uh, you know, we had started a company uh, before Celo, and one of our when we had sold the company, one of our early engineers went over to work at Coinbase. So he was keeping us sort of in the loop on what he was working on, and he had mentioned Ethereum and. Ethereum, uh, for some reason, felt uh, to me was really where I kind of had this aha moment. It wasn't really with Bitcoin; it was with Ethereum, um, and the the reason for that was fundamentally um, due to the smart contracts, right? Capabilities. Uh, this was kind of a way of realizing that okay, if if this if these kind of cryptographic assets if, if this is if this becomes money then you know because of the smart contract capabilities money now can have many more different features than one could ever imagine right um and and sort of this concept that money as software um was something that really resonated um and i think this was really i think the 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 fact that drew us in to start building in in web3 um we actually you know the cell kind of founders we the first uh, prototype we built was a wallet on ethereum um so definitely a starting point of our journey and yeah it's it's quite fascinating and not to say i, I love i love bitcoin and you know have bitcoin I, I think bitcoin is digital gold uh makes perfect sense right so I definitely consider myself a Bitcoin fan, but I think Ethereum is is in a very different category and is truly sort of like when we think about the progression of of the web, you know, web one, uh, you know, just like read, you know, and then you have read, write, web two, and then read, write, own, as Chris Dixon now famously uh, put it. And, you know, it's like, if you don't have the book yet, highly recommend. Um, I think everybody has a book by now. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it really like it, it, it basically kind of, uh, creates this kind of value layer to the internet, which allows, uh, for, you know, everything from microtransactions to users owning part of the infrastructure that they're using. And I think this is really the power of Ethereum. And I think Vitalik, uh, I mean, he's gotta be one of, I mean, definitely the greatest mind in this industry, but probably one of the greatest minds of, you know, our generation, if not, you know, like on a larger time time span, right? And really kind of seeing a lot of this, um, this kind of vision play out, um, it has been, has been pretty fascinating. Um, so, yeah, so I think, uh, when we talk about Ethereum, there are a few more things that, you know, since we first started, like, this journey um, have changed. 
So Ethereum along the way became or transitioned from uh, proof of work to become proof of stake, uh, which um, made it a lot more kind of efficient um, and I think sort of laid the foundation too for um, a scaling roadmap that now is being executed against and which with Cello we're very excited to be a part of as a layer two, um, you know, in a way leveraging Ethereum security um, kind of if you think about kind of Web3 as a stack, right, you have sort of Ethereum as the ultimate settlement layer now and then you have a, you know, increasing kind of set of chains that come with different, you know, different features, right? In the case of Celo, there's a few things we really care about that I think make Celo special and make certain applications like Halofy work really well on Celo versus maybe some other chains. Um, but being able to leverage the power of Ethereum and ultimately being a building block in the much bigger Ethereum scaling story, right? And I think that's that's uh, also kind of in a way, I think what Ethereum pioneered as an as an ecosystem, this kind of thinking that you don't have to control the entire experience end to end, right? You you can be you can build a component in the overall stack and have that be a very um, you know basically like allow for users to benefit from whatever you're building much faster, much lower cost of you know funding to, to get to something that's usable um, and also making it reusable, right? So maybe to kind of give a give a more concrete example of this. Um, for for Celo now, right, to become an L2 and not have to have to worry about things like consensus, right? And having some of that sort of super down the stack stuff be handled by you know infrastructure that's provided by kind of core ethereum we get to spend more time to think about you know what applications like halofy may need and can work on those features right for halofy to focus on an amazing user experience right versus having to think about things that cello is working on like for example on cello you can you know one of the features that makes cello special is you can use stable coins like usdt to pay for gas, right? So you don't need another token, which is a really powerful feature. Now, if Halofy did user research, this would have likely come up as something, you know, feedback, right? So then, but if Halofy had to build that feature, right, versus focusing on some other feature in the application, right? That's that's kind of the beauty of, of Ethereum in a sense, because you have all these different uh applications kind of infrastructure pieces plug into each other and allowing us as an overall ecosystem to grow a lot faster and best example you know in the case of halofy now is to say okay well halofy also doesn't have to worry about you know a lot of function like wallet functionality you know and on and off ramping in all the different markets this is something that for example a wallet like valora or or mini pay in, in opera mini can take care of and suddenly Halofy can be an application that's used by millions of people, uh, you know, despite doing that with maybe a team that in a traditional world of like Web2 startups, right, would have never ever, you know, been able to build something that can serve millions of people. Um, and so I think this is really the, maybe sometimes under, um, Underappreciated power of uh, of um, of Ethereum and, and blockchain, kind of more generally, that we are building um, in a way components that are, you know, in some some like some ways global in nature and can scale to billions of users without having to worry about ourselves building all that infrastructure. Um, so yeah, for Celo's uh, transition to L2, just to maybe. Um, yeah, kind of give a bit more detail there, you know, it was a somewhat pragmatic decision because we realized, hey, we love focusing on like helping people that build on Celo build the best possible experience. And that's where we want to spend our time versus maybe some of the more infrastructure heavy stuff, uh, which when we started, we had to focus on because Ethereum at the time was slow, was expensive, right? It was like proof of work Ethereum of 2017 was not, like you know a sort of settlement layer for you know micro payments uh, it, it just it, you know it didn't make sense and so that's why we started the journey as an l1 
but now with Ethereum scaling, you know, it made sense for us to come home to Ethereum and be in L2. Um, and as such, we kind of looked at the, you know, what is the state of the art? What are all the different kind of stacks, the different sort of the different architectures people are working on to scale Ethereum? And um, yeah, we've been, you know, it's first off, like there's really um, a lot of reasons to be bullish on Ethereum because there's a lot of really smart teams working on this with different approaches, um, different kind of trade-offs. And, and so generally, I think it made me even more bullish on Ethereum in the long term. Um, but it also, you know, having ourselves fork Ethereum early on and try to maintain compatibility, we know particularly around the trade-offs of um, deviating from kind of Ethereum core and some of the technical debt that you can create, even if it is at the benefit of some some pretty cool features. And so here with the L2 transition, we were really optimizing for um, ultimately a solution that gets us to market fast, right? Something that's already maybe battle proven and OP stack certainly has been has been around um, and you know uh, has kind of has been battle tested um, but also stay as close have maximum ethereum alignment um, to really allow for this kind of maximum compatibility um, of, of clients and so on um, it also like yeah i think in terms of versatility uh there's there's really um there's a lot of potential kind of longer term to for additional collaboration uh around some of the other stacks and technologies so you know, we really like that uh, that's that's the case as well. So we're, we're super happy. I think from a user perspective, you know, if you're using an app like HaloFi, you may not really care whether, you know, that's on Celo. You may benefit from some of the features, but I don't expect users necessarily to, to have great awareness of what Celo is or what Celo's features are. Um, so we see ourselves more as supporting the builders, right, making sure that there's awareness for applications like like Halo Prime on Celo. Um, yeah, I think maybe one thing that I didn't touch on, I touched on some of the Celo specific features. Um, you know, given our focus on, uh, yeah, kind of real world use cases, obviously low fees, um, kind of great, uh, like sort of like taking a mobile first approach has been important. One uh, other aspect, which um, I personally um, think is, is really powerful, and as Celo grows, we'll, we'll see more and more of that impact, um, is the kind of regenerative finance uh, element. And so the uh, high level idea here is to kind of say, hey, if um, this goes back to what I said in the beginning, if, if, if money is software now, then money can have really beautiful features. One feature could be that with every transaction, every sort of, you know, like every interaction within this new digital economy, you are taking some climate positive action, right? This could be, you know, I mean, if you want to kind of make it very concrete, you could say, okay, every time, you know, a certain amount of transactions happen on chain, you know, like somewhere someone is taking carbon out of the atmosphere or planting a tree or doing something that benefits the community. Um, and this is possible because some of these actions and some of those kind of things have become tokenized. Um, and so it's possible through smart contracts, right, to create automatic me mechanisms for funding those initiatives. Um, and that's what Celo is doing, has been doing uh, for the last four years. Yesterday was Earth Day, it was the four year anniversary of mainnet for, for Celo. And um, I have to look up the exact amount. Uh, should let me do it while we're uh yeah if you go to ultragreen.money um you will basically see sort of the dashboards that show exactly how much uh carbon has been kind of offset since the beginning um yeah of of cello um so yeah the lifetime carbon offset where is it um here we go 6528 uh tons which is the equivalent of 16 million miles driven by car or 3,840 flights between London and New York, uh, 7 million pounds of coal burned. So yeah, pretty pretty significant uh, given that we're still you know pretty early in this journey. But you could imagine as activity on cello grows that those numbers really go up and hopefully at some point they rival 
um, you know, kind of the the work that some of the the bigger, you know, organizational profits governments even are doing uh, around around climate action. So uh, pretty exciting and, and great that really, you know, when you uh, when you go on Halofy um, and you earn some nice juicy yield on your on your dollars, uh, you are actually also helping the environment. Um, cool. Well, that was that was a bit of an overview um, covering yeah some of the journey that Ethereum's had, how Celo plugs in, also with the L2 transition. Um, maybe for the remaining time, you know, happy to take some questions. Great to um, have all of those. Um, I mean, whole of knowledge for us to like um, learn more about how it began. I mean, uh, I think your journey has started way longer than I would actually even have thought of knowing cryptocurrency, right? So it's a whole bunch of experience right there. And um, it's it's pretty great to learn about the inside. And yes, Ethereum is actually powering a lot of things. And I love the fact that developers are able to like um, use Ethereum to scale up and build for the users. And yeah, talking about Celo and um, it's, it's bid to help like the environment to help it become better. I think it's actually a great initiative that every one of us can benefit um, from. We see a lot of um, different blockchains that do not even care about offsetting carbon and stuff like that. So um, this this is something I think is really um, it's really um, helpful. To um, yeah, I would want you to just talk a bit about um, smart contracts. I can share the slide I have here for that. And we we'll just, maybe you talk okay, about it for like- okay. We do, before we jump yeah. into that, we do actually have a question that's come through on the chat. Um, and it's from EJ Rosenberg, who says, what do you envision for, what do you envision for the next way Celo will adapt as the blockchain matures? Now, this is interesting because obviously Celo is going on this, you know, epic journey of L1 to L2. Very curious yeah. to kind of hear like, yeah, what comes beyond that? Yeah, I think it's really it's really interesting. Um, I think we're still super early, right? I think um, you know if you look at some of the biggest uh, you know wallets on on Celo, you know MiniPay recently announced crossing two million users. I mean, we have like seven billion people on phones across the world, right? So we're we're like we're we're here compared to where we where we want to go, right? And I think I think what's interesting though is um, you know. People want everything now, and you know, like you know, I think it's 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 always. Um, I feel the same way. I'm like, man, why hasn't this happened yet? You know, and like, why why aren't we seeing more of this use case or that? And you know, some concrete examples for me is okay. Like, we have wallets. We have people have now kind of easy access to assets, right? And once we get to a, a big enough Kind of almost like install base for Web3, where people really, you know, have a good setup. They they know how to use it. They know how to cash in, cash out. Then, uh, you know, that becomes sort of the basic plumbing that can enable the next wave of of use cases, right? I mean, on things that I'm personally passionate about are things like bringing more kind of digital mobile work opportunities, right, to people everywhere. And you do work on your phone, and you get paid directly into your Wallet, right? It's USD, USDT, whatever it is, and then you can take some of that, put it in Halofi, earn a nice yield, right? That's um, <clears throat> that's certainly what I'm excited about in this kind of immediate phase. But then longer term, also, let's think about the power of everyone having kind of a wallet on their phone that they control. And they have, you know, like that's sort of their gateway to this this new digital economy. I've personally been getting pretty interested in some of the decentralized science use cases. You know, how could you use this to fund, for example, research for kind of more long tail drugs, right? That in kind of the current pharma uh, world would just not, you know, kind of be prioritized um, and then kind of rolled out in, in market. So I think there's, once we have this basic infrastructure um, and it's working really well, I think we'll, we'll see sort of an explosion of really cool uh, and interesting applications. So yeah, very much feels we're at the beginning. And with Celo, you know, I think the overall mission of prosperity for all is 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 very broad and ambitious, right? So I think even 
if we make great progress here in the next 10 years, it will always kind of feel like we're we're still at the beginning, which is which is kind of a nice feeling. It keeps you keeps you humble, keeps you building, keeps you focused on sort of you know today and the next day. Um, and I think that's 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 really nice. Yeah, thanks. thanks for that answer. Um, I mean, it's great to have all of those ideas. Um, we have another question. When I joined Celo, when I started using the Celo uh, chain, I was actually amused by the um, very low transaction fees compared to Ethereum. And um, we have a question here re relating to that, um, that why, um, how come the fees on Celo are low? Why Ethereum fees are quite high? So maybe you can give a short question, a short answer to that. Thank you. Yeah, so some of that is uh, based on the architecture. Um, there are certain, certainly also there, there are scaling limits and this the current architecture, right? So we, last year, best data point I have was last year, there was a 24 hour period where we saw over 20 million transactions and fees were still uh, less than a cent. So the fees didn't really move up. Um, and that's probably getting pretty close to sort of, you know, just looking at the current architecture and kind of uh, block limits. That's that's probably, you know, that's, that's doable, um, which means we have quite a bit of room with the existing architecture. Um, but then, yeah, I think, you know, seeing also the question earlier around, you know, what's next, you know, now L2 and, and so on, right? I think, I imagine for the next year or two, that's that's fine, right? It'd be awesome to get to 20 million transactions a day, every day, and uh, have that tied to real economic activity. Um, but but also in parallel, right? Like laying the foundation for then getting the next 10x, 100x um, increase to that. And yeah, that could be through, you know, a, a scaling sort of similar to kind of what you see with sort of like Ethereum right now, scaling through L2s, right? You could see, uh, kind of an ecosystem of chains. You, you know, certainly, kind of, you know, people starting to experience uh, experiment with with L threes. Though there's some, you know, there's some kind of it doesn't kind of just grow linearly in terms of the the scale you kind of reach, or like um, like it doesn't exponentially. I guess would be the right word. Um, so, but yeah, I think that's that's a core topic um, for us to keep an eye on. Um, but uh, yeah, I think maybe. Fees could be higher in Zello, right? We could, you know, like they said, by governance. Um, so uh, I think other chains have just prioritized fee, like, you know, chain revenue over maybe some of the use cases that we really care about. For us, I think from the beginning, it's been important to have super low fees to enable particularly micro transactions. I think a lot of the cool work that's happened around, for example, community currencies just wouldn't have been feasible to even you know uh yeah be deployed and, and sustainable on on any other chain um but that's also the nice thing about kind of moving to an l2 right there with the current architecture we can continue to keep fees that low and um still be profitable from a chain perspective great and, and i think this really enforces um the mission of Celo, our prosperity for for everyone and uh I mean, it really like makes sense that the fees are low and affordable and align a lot of people to onboard to settle. We have a couple of questions here. I'm thinking maybe you can take um, one or two before you leave. Um, I don't know if you've got time, but I don't want to like um, go past your time here. So the question is, um, two days ago, we celebrated the, um, the fourth year anniversary of our um, Cello Minute launch. And so we announced the partnership with Optimism. So someone is asking um, why OP stack? And then is Cello going to be part of the super chain? So could you quickly answer that? Thanks. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely point, uh, I think it's Alan who asked the question to the, to the forum. It's a very detailed uh, sort of uh, breakdown of, uh, you know, why OP stack also Super chain, uh, I think it's a super exciting concept. I think it's evolving. We're excited about it, uh, but it's also, you know, for an existing chain with, you know, the sort of criteria for us as an L2, um, a lot of this will be kind of not custom. And so there's there's kind of more work needed with the OP team to see, hey, how how could Celo even fit to be part of super chain while maintaining, you know, sort of the things that make Celo special. Um, but, but yeah, um, also some, some stuff on that kind of more of that to come, but, you know, you definitely find some of that, um, in the forum. 
Um, maybe, yeah, just looking at some of these questions, if you want me to, I can just kind of give some sort of very yeah, quick sure. knock, knock some of them out. Uh, account abstraction for Salo. Um, we do have account abstraction today. You can, there's a protocol called Social Connect, and the way it works is basically you can use phone numbers uh, as a proxy for your for your public key. There's a kind of a distinct kind of protocol that's um, doing that in a privacy conscious way. And um, for example, it's used by MiniPay. So on MiniPay, you can send your your friends just directly, you know, uh, money to to their phone number, uh, which is pretty powerful. It could be used with other identifiers as well, which is definitely a popular one. Will USDT UCC be adopted as stables on MiniPay? Um, Probably better question for Opera, um, but as a stablecoin wallet um, and sort of high demand for those stables uh, across all over the world, um, I would imagine that's in the cards. So stay tuned. Uh, your thoughts on proposed Bitcoin layers? Next. Yeah, the Bitcoin L2 stuff. You know, it's interesting. I, I think for us, it's kind of just like, you know, we started in Ethereum, we've been in the Ethereum community, a lot of our friends are. In the broader Ethereum community, so you know it wasn't really something that I'm we're, we're paying too close attention to. Um, I like Bitcoin as digital gold. I think I, I like Ethereum sort of as the kind of uh, kind of compute platform and, and sort of uh, for applications. Um, but yeah, I also you know like these things kind of play out how they will play out. So I'm always happy to see people kind of experiment with new tech, and maybe we'll all learn from uh some of those experiments uh sell DeFi for the people yeah it was uh DeFi for the people is interesting i mean we're uh we're still waiting on Aave to go live uh we had some recent kind of updates there which indicate that yeah, the community is pretty close to maybe getting to the final vote to make that happen which would be i think pretty cool um I think right now, I mean, yields are pretty strong. I, I just saw like Mula and Mula tweets were on CUSD is like over 20% yield, which I think, yeah, you can access through, for example, Halo Phi. Um, and um, I think with some of the other stables coming on, I think there's more movement also around FX markets. So I, I definitely think this is kind of an area where Celo can play a big role, right? If you with Mentor launching more uh, stables, local currency stables, for example, against currencies like, you know, the Kenyan shilling, or, you know, like they already have the Real and West African franc. And I'm, you know, I think that's gonna be pretty interesting because people can then maybe start using this to, to kind of hedge their FX exposure or just trade currencies, um, maybe also in places where they don't have access um, to, um, yeah, to sort of traditional kind of banking services that would offer that. So uh, yeah, I think um, pretty excited for that. Um, I think we're still very early, right? A lot of like DeFi last cycle um, was still very spot market heavy. And especially if you're thinking about businesses, for example, hedging their FX exposure, right? They have through contracts and receivables and whatnot, right? You need uh, futures markets, you need sort of yield curves, you need some of the derivative uh, structures. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I think with sort of the momentum shifting again in the broader industry, I, I see a lot of smart teams and people coming in and wanting to work on that. So makes me makes me very optimistic. Great. Um, thank you for taking all of those questions. And yeah, you're definitely right about um, the API you can get through HelloFi. Like it's it's really great to see that people can even get up to 20% APY. And um, that definitely encourage a lot of people to like save through HelloFi. It just means um, keeping your CUSD and um, not having to worry about like um, the, in, the yields coming in. Everything is like user-friendly and you get to like, I mean, it's, it's, it's great that you mentioned that and thanks for mentioning that. Um, yeah, we've gone four minutes over about your time, and thank you for your patience. Thank um, you all so much. It was really fun. Uh, I wish everyone in the program best of luck, and uh, yeah, thank you, Halo Five, for hosting and doing this, and see you all soon. Thank yeah. you so much. Cheers. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, so guys, um, it was great having Rene on this call. Um, I really hope you picked a lot of things from the conversation and it's really great with the ins insight that has been shared so far because I think like a lot of things that you need to like, um, Rachel, I see you raised your hand, no worries. At the end of the call, we are going to like, um, let you like speak or like, I mean, still ask you questions if you've got any. So, um, but then it's great having Rini here. So in the next five minutes, guys, um, we are going to go through the slides that we've not covered yet. Don't worry, we might, we might not even pick up to that time. Uh, and just to let you know, we are still sticking to the time we plan to end early, um, end, like end earlier enough, which is going to be 25 minutes from now. So having said that, I'm going to continue by um, sharing my screen and we've got some good things for you. Like, um, so you wouldn't want to miss them. So make sure you stay um, to the end of this um, call. So um, yeah. Yeah, we 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 stopped here before we had Rainy join us, and he actually like mentioned most of what we're going to go through now. So it's going to be pretty snappy. So um, Bitcoin operates as a peer to peer. Remember the illustration I used, like um, you giving a dollar bill to someone you can see physically. So um, yeah, that's basically how Bitcoin works. Um, you don't actually need anybody who is going to process the transaction. You don't need the bank, actually. You don't need um, anyone to depend on. And the process is fully um, trust trustless. So, like, you don't have to be scared about anybody running away with your money. The transactions are verified and recorded on the blockchain by miners um, who solve complex mathematical puzzles. So, um, after doing that, they add a new block to the chain. And so Bitcoin serves as a distributed ledger. And just like you can see here, um, they, there are different nodes that keep um, charge of the transactions and they are broadcasted among each other to make sure that all the information are correct. With the short video we watch, you see that um, like the different people who were standing, they, they serve as like, those who validate the transaction on the blockchain to make sure that all transactions are actually like transparent and everybody is agreeing on the same thing, which makes it to be transparent at, I mean, the maximum security you can get. So just a little explanation of what nodes are, nodes and minor, and I think we are going towards the end of this. Um, just like we can see on this slide, nodes are like the workers of the Bitcoin network. They are computer or devices that like helps to make sure everything is running smoothly. And so like this brings us back to the transaction um, the blockchain being a public ledger. And um, yeah, just so you know, uh, the miners actually earn some fees after like um, the are done with the transaction, like after they solve a problem. Right, just like we can see here, miners are like special type of node. They compete with each other to solve tricky math problem. And at the end of the whole process, when they confirm the transaction, when all the transaction has been completed, they earn um, a little bit of Bitcoin for their like activity on the blockchain. Um, so we, I mean, maybe you heard about like the having that took place four days ago. And so what it basically mean was that, um, the reward of these miners have now been slashed into two. It has been halved. So um, if, uh, just for an example, if a miner was getting one Bitcoin at the end of the year for his activities on the blockchain, now he will start to get um, half a Bitcoin, which makes it more scarce. We have a video here, but for the sake of time, we're just going to skip it. Um, I mean, um, Rene talked about this. Ethereum was launched in 2015 and it supports dApps. And like dApps and smart contracts really powers a lot of things. And so we are just going to proceed to the last slide. Um, we're going to just talk about smart contracts. So basically, what smart contracts are, are like agreements that are written into code. So for instance, um, you, you're like, you, you're having an agreement with someone and 
you're specifying the rule. And so maybe you say, if it rains today, um, maybe you want to make it bet, right? Uh, if it rains later today, you're going to like get a dollar and your friend is betting against that. Like if it doesn't rain today, like he's going to get a dollar. So you bring your dollar and he brings his dollar. And this is like written in agreement on the blockchain. And so whatsoever happens, determine who is going to be the winner either you or your friend. And so this is an application of uh, smart contracts. In HelloFi, we do use smart contracts. And when we talk about smart contracts, the, the are lines of code that have been written and then when deployed, like everybody can see the terms of the contract and it is, it is, it is safe. So it eliminates the need for trust. Like you don't need to depend on any um, intermediary either. You just need to, like let the technology like figure um, it on its own and it's like programmed to work directly. So yeah, I think this is going to be pretty much it for um, um, the the class for today. And so yeah, we have we are gradually approaching the end of this session. Um, the slides, I see a question with the slides be shared as well as the recording. Definitely, we are going to share the recording and with the slides, um, yeah, we can share the slides also. So no worry, you're getting all of that. Um, please, if you have any questions right now, now is the time to like ask a question because you are jumping into the full um, fun time. So yeah, let's get things started. So um, to start with, um okay we have a trade competition for everyone on this call and this is an opportunity to just share what you've actually learned in this like session i expect to see some excitement some um emojis popping up and all of that because this is actually um a great way to share what you've learned and um get some i mean rewards from it and then you can actually start to even save and hello five save and get some nice apy on it so yeah what you're required to do is to create a high quality thread about what you've learned today and um you're going to tag hello you're going to tag cello you're going to tag rene and you're going to use the hashtag hello defy diplomas and that's all you need to do to enter um, into the raffle of 30 CUSD. And um, we are not making it super strict, so feel free to be creative. We just need um, a high quality thread. And there might be some surprises, so we'd love you to like take this um, opportunity um, to like, I mean, share what you've learned and um, like end something. We'll definitely engage with any post you make, so make sure to tag us. And right now, we are going to like have the selfie time before we proceed to the final fun of the day. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Is it possible to lock to get the lock feature on Hello Five Save? So Rachel is here. We don't have it currently. Rachel, no, do you want to share we, any? We have had uh, a bunch of people asking about this. Um, so it's something that we spoke about internally. Um, would you expect? For locked feature, is it more, I just want to ask you questions just so I can understand like what's most useful. Is it so that you can earn more when it's locked or is it to stop you from kind of spending? Um, Trinity. Both ways, okay. are, both ways are good for you, Trinity. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, one of those is easier for us to build out than the other. So like, it's good to know that both are useful. Um, but yeah, thank you. Awesome, I'll pass back over to you, Precious. Um, so do you want us to all like those who dare to uh, reveal their um, reveal their their face? Absolutely. So um, please, if you can, would like you to like um, show your video. I can see Abisola. Great to see you. I can see Rachel with the camera on. Uh, Abisoye, sorry about that. Falabi, great. I'm actually a Yoruba, so I'm not supposed to miss that name. I can see Naza, I can see all of you. So please um, turn on your camera, let's have a nice um, screenshot. I'm going to wait for like 10 seconds for those who have to maybe uh, get something on and get ready. So like, um, we're going to get it 
done soon. So let's let's all count, count down to 10 on the chart. So I believe by then we would actually have everybody ready. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. I can see Geoffrey. Great to see you. 4, 3, 2, and one so yeah here's the moment cheers everyone yeah great to like have this good moment with all of you where in case for the last time in case you have not turned on your camera we're going to be sharing this on our official handle so if you want to like see yourself on hello fire official it is good to turn on your camera so that we can like have you on our official handle so like yeah Great, great. So we're going to proceed with the last item for the day. And I'm sharing my screen right now. Everybody get ready, get ready. Um, I'm sure you're going to like this. So here we go. So guys, it's official quiz time. And this is going to be a fun quiz, like a really fun quiz rewards are attached and it's basically going to be um it's going to be like what you've learned today so you don't need to like um get prepared in any way no if you like listen to the conversation then you would actually have all the questions in like you have all the answers to this question they are basically simple and what we've done is to like add some bits of um pictures to like give you the idea of whatever we have said. And before we go for the quiz, guys, um, let me let you know that we are actually giving out NFTs um, to everyone who joined this call and who are still here. All you are required to do is to fill your form, include your email and your um, CUSD or your cello wallet address. You can get that from, maybe you can use a MetaMask, you can download it on, you can download Valera and get it from Valera and you can get like it from Trust Wallet. So just copy your CUSD or your seller wallet and fill it in there. I'm saying this now because five minutes after the call, we're going to close the entry for the um, NFT forms. So like if you don't fill it immediately um, within the next five to 10 minutes after we drop the link here, then we're going to close the form. We don't want people who didn't join the call to like, um, get um the nfts without joining so thomas is asking what nfts are they so they are like um cool props uh cool images that we have like um deployed on the blockchain to signify your participation in this course and we are going to be getting each for like each week you understand now here is where it gets really um amazing if you are able to get the um nfts for the seven week we're going to be like having this call then we have a special certificate from you um gotten directly from talent protocol so we are partnering with talent protocol to get you that certificate so i would want all of you to like not miss out of any of this session from next week we're going to be having one hour strictly one hour five five minutes to join the call and they will kick off so yeah um now i'm going to be sharing the link to the um quiz so one last information about this quiz please when you like join when you join um with the code i'm going to share please use your twitter um handle as your username so if you can see on the next slide we are going to be giving two lucky winners um, some CUSD. Uh, just you just need to post the like um, the screenshot of the quiz. Like after you're done with the quiz, and we're going to pick two people randomly. It doesn't matter if you don't get all the questions as much as you like. I mean, you're above average, so um, you're you're eligible to be a winner. So now I'm sharing the link to the chat box, please wait um for like wait till when i tell you to like um join the the quiz wait till when i tell you to like start the game so when you click on this link right now 
um let me know if you're able to click on the link you just need to like copy the link and paste it on your um browser so i have pinned the link when you copy this link it will take you to a page where you have to put uh, your twitter username as your profile name so put your twitter username then it will show you the defi diplomas week one quiz you click on it then it will show you a page to start um please hold on till um i tell you to start it's just going to be for like two minutes just to get everybody in so um i'm checking it right here to see um people who have joined so yeah we're going to get started soon so uh if you have joined um you can just like let me know on the chat box or oh, we're just going to give like two minutes to everyone to join with the link if you're having any issues please um let me know on the chat box so we're giving to um um 2 pm utc for everyone to join after which we're going to get started so um guys you cannot participate twice Um, you cannot participate twice. Make sure like you're reading the questions. Yeah, your name should be your Twitter username, actually. So if your username is like, my username is as Focus Pilot. So you just have to put it here. So we can recognize you when you make the posts. We can check if you actually participated in the quiz and we can give you the reward. So like, um, that's the reason why you have to use your Twitter username. But if any of you don't have a Twitter username, then use your Telegram username. And um, yeah, you said, how about the NFT form link? So immediately after the quiz, the quiz is going to last for a maximum of five minutes. And immediately after, um, we are going to have like the form live. So um, yeah, it's coming soon. Contract address for Celo, Rachel Ayomidi. Um, so let me just quick, quickly grab that. Uh, um, just a moment. So it's it's remaining just just a minute for us to like get everybody logged in for the quiz, and then we are going to kick start it. So um, yeah. So I am it, um, Rachel Ayomidi. I'm sending you the contract address for Celu right now. Oh, so sorry. Just uh, can you just give me a little context? What do I need to do here? Yeah. So um, you actually need to copy the link. I pin the link. Then when you um, paste the link on your browser, it takes you to a page where you're going to like um, add your profile name. You have to use your Twitter um, username as your profile name. Then you're going to like. Um, click on it. It will take you to a page where you're going to see the DeFi quiz for today, and then you click on it. Then you wait for us to start. So we are starting right now. Are you? Are you oh, on the same okay. page? because so, I just had a uh, a cello address. Can we send out the prizes after this call? Because I think it just take a little bit of logistics. Um, but where yes. is the link for the quiz? I don't know if I can see that. Uh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me grab that. Yeah. So so the question with this contract address i think um maybe um the user the, the the person who has the question just like needs it it's not related to the reward we are distributing so yeah i'm just sending it for their personal use do you want um, me to share my screen now yeah you can you can so it will be uh for let me one second um yeah, I can see um, some people are already answering the quiz. So, like, let's get started, guys. Um, we can get started now. So, you can start to answer the questions on the quiz. I'm just going to share. Uh, I can see your screen. Okay, great. You want me to go in as a participant? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this is what you're supposed to do, everyone. And then you click on launch and then you can start the quiz but so um you don't show your answers to others i'm just going to share my screen instead so i can show the progress okay. 
so um yeah the quiz is ongoing guys just answer the question and i can see the leaderboard um getting updated we have a um, team Boamosis, who has got nine over ten everyone ignore this first account it was a test account so yeah we've got bali street funds bali street area funds um eight over ten kinsley seven over ten um big c's seven over ten i mean we have a lot of people who are dragging with like they're they are like dragging the top position so let's see how you still have the opportunity if you've not participated before you still have the opportunity to be at the top of the leaderboard so like it's good to see how this plays out okay we have um we have other still playing in so oh great we have t emmanuel as um the first person to get um full points so congratulations t emmanuel shipper of course i think you have one more question to like get the full questions to make the right decision and let's see how it goes and, and that barry yeah almost there great shopper of course congratulations um dabai congratulations so guys um i'm sure we still have some people who haven't completed this yet um this will be ending in the next two minutes so take your time though take your time to like complete the quiz and let me know in the chat box if any of you is having any um like any hard time completing this so congratulations to the top winners already um let, let's check let's check um good so rachel i can't see you on the list yeah i didn't finish it um i'm leaving it for everyone else so i think i, I don't need to be a contestant <laughs> <laughs> okay great i mean yeah pro so you'd probably get everything right um that's understandable uh yeah, cool, cool. We still have some people participating and we are going to have this um, over with uh, in the next one minute. Yeah, so yeah, for those who have completed this, I'm just going to like, sh I'm going to like start sh um, sharing the link. So it's just a link to a short form you have to fill and then you're going to get the nfts so just a moment so yeah here is the link i'm sharing it to the chat box so congratulations regs you're done with the quiz um rachel ayomide you're not able to take the quiz what what error do you have um let me know what part of the quiz would you like us to screen to screenshot to post on Twitter? Is the ending part of the quiz? Uh, you just need to like um, share the ending part of the quiz, like where you see your points. It's going to show you your points, and then you can share. Um, Habib, your name is not on the list. Just let me know the name you use. I would be able to find it over here. And um, yeah, so. I think you're not able to assess the quiz, Ms. Misha. Sorry about that. Try with another browser. Great, great. Um, yeah, so guys, here is the link to the form. Quickly fill it now because we're going to close the form in the next um in the next five to ten minutes. So you can seem to copy the cello contract address so just in case any of you like does not have like um a wallet yet you can actually use trust wallet so go to the app store or to play store to download trust wallet or you can download metamask or you can download valora so i'm just going to write the names here um valora 
we have Valora Trust Wallet and MetaMask. So once you download any of these and you're going to get your free skis, like you're going to get to you're going to get 12 words. Um once you get the 12 words, you make sure they are secured and then you create an account. Then you copy your wallet address and like send the wallet address to the form, like fill it in the form. I'm sending the link here. So guys, um officially we have come to the end of this session david kenichiku um just a moment we have come to the end of this session and it was great having all of you on this call and um yeah we are we are excited to kick this off guys sincerely it's been a very nice um moment with you guys sharing knowledge and um like having this discussion and we are going to um proceed on the next class we're going to have different partners join us and we're going to have other fun things to do so great to have you on this call guys we have a total of 32 participants that's great to see that um so guys yeah now we've come to the end of the session if you are done with filling the session uh filling the form um feel free to like jump out of this call and we are going to like um meet on the group so guys we are going to be posting um some of these sessions um on our x account on twitter do well to support us if you are not on our telegram or whatsapp please like check your email or send a dm to halify on um on twitter halify underscore me then we're going to like um, add you up if you are in this session. And I can see a lot of feedbacks. Um, sisters say, done, feeling, done with filling the form. I really enjoyed this session. Great to hear that. We are super happy to like um, bring you this information, uh, informative session and to get like key speakers in to make you understand better like about maybe what wasn't clear to you before. Um, Habex World said, this is super informative. You really enjoyed the session. Awesome. We actually did enjoy sharing this information with you. So thanks for joining. Rex say you've submitted the NFT form. Awesome. Um, great to see that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I humbly appreciate it. We are grateful to have you join us. At the I say thank you. It was an exciting experience. Um, thank you too for joining this. And so for the sake of those that haven't filled the form fully, um, you can copy either of it, but maybe you just copy the cello wallet address. So you can send the cello wallet address Kinsley. And so I'm just checking through to see number of persons that has filled the form. We have 15 people who has filled the form already. We are waiting for others, 17 people now. So. We are waiting for others. Um, so, um, David, David Kenichiko, I think you have a question. I can unmute you so you can like ask your question. So kindly ask your question now, David. Okay, sorry, sorry. It was it was a mistake. It was a All right, mistake. great, great, great. Understandable. Um, thanks for joining the session. And guys, we have two more minutes to officially end the session. So you're sending your your cellular wallet address, your CUSD wallet address, Emmanuel, Emanuela. So I hope you got that. The link is not working on your end. Okay, let me copy the longer link so um, you can use that. And if the link is not working for you, then you can use this longer link. So I just sent the longer link, so it should work with this. So guys, we have one more minute. Um, if you haven't 
fill the form. You just have to copy this link, and um, I mean, you can you can fill it later. David, it is CESD address. You can use CESD or sell you like only you support sell you. You are going to get the NFT. So maybe you sell your address. So we are ending this in a few seconds so guys um final words to you it's been great having you on this session um this is